Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about audit hooks, which I think are really interesting. They're a nice little security feature that was added to Python in 3.8, and they allow you to instrument your runtime and prevent certain operations from happening just holistically, or to give you a place to log and, and audit things. Well, they're called audit hooks, so of course auditing is part of it. But uh, anyway, I want to explain how they work, how you can add your own hooks to this and how you can hook into the system and get better you know, understanding of how your system works. Okay, so the basic idea behind this is there is now a new set of global functions which you can add hooks to that will get fired when certain security sensitive uh, operations occur. The basic way this works is if you're in C, C land, you can use the add audit hook uh, pysys add audit hook callback, or you can use the pysys on it to fire an audit event yourself, but you're probably working in pure Python, so you'll be dealing with the add audit hook function or the audit function. This is what fires events. This is how you can add your callback to this. This isn't Python syntax. I don't know why they wrote it this way, but it takes a single argument, which is a function that takes the, uh, the audit event itself and then a tuple of arguments. And those arguments vary based on what event happens. Now these get fired in all sorts of different cases. Uh, some of the things that you might imagine are like, well, actually they list them, some of them here. You know, dynamic code compilation, executing a sub uh, sub process, making an HTTP request, looking up DNS, things that you might want to know about your system that you might want to prevent in certain situations. For instance, you probably, like a lot of applications probably never need to make HTTP requests. So if you're running this in production, it might be a good idea to add an audit hook that prevents all uh, you know, outbound HTTP requests. Now, of course, it's probably better to do this at the network layer rather than in Python, uh, but that's just you know, one example. You might also say, okay, my application should never open a subprocess. So you could just ban subprocess.popen entirely, and the audit hook system gives you a good way to do this without having to worry about you know, monkey patching the right library or finding the right place or tracking down all the potential places where subprocesses can occur. All right, so I wanted to show you an example of this and walk you through some of the hooks that get fired as well as how we might write a hook to prevent a particular class of problems. And in order to do that, we're gonna run Python. Uh, we need a version that's newer than 3.8. I'm using 3.10 here. And we are going to import the sys module. We're gonna write just a very silly audit hook that prints the event and its arguments. Uh, so we have event and args. This is kind of the signature that you'll use. I'll actually put the signatures here. You'll have tuple any dot dot dot. I haven't actually imported any, so this is probably going to error, but that's fine. And this is going to return none. And we are just going to print our event and the arguments, and that way we can see what's going on. Yeah, from typing import any. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Should have from future import annotations, then I wouldn't have had to worry about it. Anyway, okay, so we've at, we've created our audit function. Now we need to register it with the system. We can do that by doing sys.add audit hook and pass in our audit function. Uh, and now you'll start to see some of our audit hooks. We actually have one right off the bat, which is the compile audit hook. Uh, this gets fired whenever code is turned from text or bytes into executable code. In this case, it passed none as the code object, and this is because the uh, Python REPL tries to compile you know, the, the remaining text here, and since there is no text, it didn't actually compile anything. Uh, if we were to you know, print hi, for instance, we'll actually see a different compile output here. Actually, we see exec. Oh, we don't see the compile for that. Weird. Interesting. I don't know why we don't see the compile for that. Anyway, normally you would expect to see the compile there. Uh, let's show another example where we import a module and then we're gonna run a subprocess from this. Whoa, there's a whole bunch of output here. Okay, so a lot of things happened when we ran that. Uh, I'm just gonna walk you through a few of them that might be of interest to you and might explain why they're security sensitive. The first is kind of weird, object.double under set adder. You would think that just setting an attribute on something doesn't seem that security sensitive, but this is interesting because it means that something was trying to bypass the normal attribute assignment. Uh, in this case, it's just setting the, the doc string. I don't know why they used object set adder here instead of just setting it directly. I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, 
Uh, here's another security sensitive function, which is sys.getFrame. This is trying to do a frame jump and look at its caller to figure something out. This is actually for building a name tuple, so it's not, not that nefarious, but it is something that you might want to look into if you're writing a security sensitive uh, operation. We also see the compile events from our name tuple building. I don't actually know which name tuple it's building, but who knows? We see all these imports. We see this big chunk of bytecode here. This is actually, I believe, from marshall.loads while loading a PyC file. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of different audit events that get hooked into. So you wanna make sure that you're only looking at the one you care about. Now, the one that I wanted to show off is subprocess.call. Let's just do echo hi. And this might be one that would be really useful to hook into, which is subprocess.popen. Uh, this is gonna get called when you, whenever you make a subprocess, and so it might be useful to you know, either prevent this or a log in this case or, or do something like that. Now I wanted to show you how to write your own audit hook that prevents something. Uh, my audit hook is gonna be extremely silly here, but you could imagine adapting this to something more practical. We are going to prevent importing the email module. Now, why would you do this? I don't know. It just seemed like a module that I, I could easily ban and I knew was not part of the setup. Uh, so if we do write our audit hook again, we have event as a string, we have args as a tuple, and we're going to return none. We need to specifically select for our particular audit hook. So we're gonna do if event is equal to import, that is the one that gets triggered when we have import. Uh, and args zero is equal to email. So that's the particular module that we're trying to ban. Then we're going to raise uh, Import error, no smiley face. And now if we do sys.add audit hook, <laughs> it's funny, actually, uh, ran some fun um, audit hooks while I was trying to tab complete. <laughs> that output is a little bit nonsense, but now we've added another audit hook. You'll actually see that uh, the audit hook has an audit hook. <laughs> There's also another audit hook to clear them. I believe it's sys. Clear audit hooks? Oh man. I don't know because it's. <laughs> we'll, we'll try it in a new uh, REPL when I can actually see what's going on here. Um, but anyway, now if I try and import the email module, you'll see that I get a import error no smiley face uh, after a whole bunch of other audit hooks up here. Uh, but don't worry about those. Um, so we've, we've successfully prevented importing the email module now. I'm sure there are still other ways around this, like manually opening the file and executing it and sticking it into system modules. So this isn't a bulletproof thing, but it does give you a tool that you can use in your security toolbox to help you identify things and audit your system for unexpected behaviors. Now I wanted to actually find that uh, the clearing function. Um, huh. I thought it was in here. Ursus uh, audit in. Uh, er Name for name in if audit in name. Oh, huh. interesting. Maybe there isn't a way to clear it. I think you can clear it from the C level, but not in Python. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is how you can make your own custom audit events, and it's extremely simple. You just call sys.audit with my event name, and you can pass in whatever arguments you want in here. So if you say like one, two, three, I think that's how it works. Yeah. So. Then if you had hooked up an audit event, uh, sys.add audit hook lambda, let's just add a printing one. Uh, and if we call sys.audit again, you'll see that we're able to trigger our own audit event. Uh, this might be useful if you write a library that has a particular security sensitive entry point. You might wanna make sure it only gets called in certain contexts or something like that. Or maybe you're implementing your own HP library. You need to, you know, respond to the same standard set of. Uh, but anyway, this is Audit Hooks. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below, reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.